Someday new approaches will permeate, will, will, be, will be used by the international committees on species lists. If you think that this is the only, the, the only exercise that has been done with birds to evaluate different, different species concepts and see its impact on biodiversity, we, it is not. So different approaches, similar approaches have been produced in different areas. The very first one was in the highly di diverse Dutch avifauna. It's like 22 species in the Netherlands, maybe. But then, but they have, they have already done its job. There's a, there's a paper on the the rest of the Philippines. The, the, uh, the Brazilians have produced also things. The Australians. And now there there is a, a group of researchers in the world that are using our approach and similar approaches to generate a new authority file, a new authority list of the birds of the world based on these approaches. And it's the International Ornithological Committee list. The, many of the species of the FT, of the FT uh, nomenclature have been included here in this list. I don't know why. It's because I'm in the committee town, maybe. But, but it's, it's very interesting that we have now a, a list that includes those changes. Ah, yeah, the, no, nothing, nothing to do with that. So, eh? so what? Just want that re-emphasize this. But it also just showed you is that when you take the taxonomy of a group from an old taxonomy to a new taxonomy, and some of your, some of your changes for some of your groups might actually be lumping instead of splitting. Okay? But what, what we've tried to do is move the taxonomy of Mexican birds to a structure that reflects evolutionary history and not taxonomic tradition. But there is a clear, massive macrogeographic effect on conservation priority. And so always before it was easy to say, oh, I'm a conservation biologist. And he's just a taxonomist. But the point of this body of work is that the conservation biologist has to work in detail with the very best systematists who work on those groups. Otherwise, guess what? You're going to get the wrong answer. Okay? Conservation biology working in absence of modern systematic research and thought will get the wrong answer. Now look at those distributions of endemism. Look at, for example, the Tres Marias Islands, which before this work had no endemic species. Tiny little islands off of the west coast of Mexico. No endemic species. And after some careful work, Trust us, we've looked at the specimens. Eight endemic species. They're all microendemics, and guess what? They're all endangered. So do you invest in that place or not? So this point, to me, is, is kind of one of the most critical ones I've seen in my career. I've participated in my career, where you totally reorganize how conservation should be done. And those same messages apply right here in Africa. You could take any major taxon, re-examine the taxonomy, or in some cases, simply flesh out the taxonomy with full description of all the forms. But let's say any vertebrate or any well-known group, 
reviewing the taxonomy from a modern lineage-based systematic viewpoint, the conservation challenges move around. And the question is, should conservation be conserving true biological diversity or what somebody kind of considered to be the categories 80 years ago? So this is really important stuff. Yes, and one of the points that I forgot to mention is for, f by means of their own definitions, species concepts as applied to biodiversity tend to overestimate or underestimate the diversity. For example, what happens when you use the biological species concept? Do you underestimate or overestimate the biological diversity? If you are saying, I need information on interbreeding of populations to decide if these two things are different species. What have, do I have to do? I need to test it. We have populations living in one in an island, one in the mainland. And my hypothesis is they are the same species. I need to have them interbreeding. What do I do? Take them to the lab? To put them in a, in a cage if they are birds and sit and wait if they breathe or not. If they breathe, I have to wait until they have babies and to see if the babies are, survive or not. So it's very complex. For the insects, for example, how do you test it? You, maybe you can see uh, the reproduct, reproductive tracts and see if they fit. But it is full of uh, it is full of hypotheses. Once, because because you don't you don't you you cannot test every single pair of populations uh, and, and breed, um, interbreeding uh, approach. What we decide is okay. They are the same species because possibly they breathe. So we have a taxonomy that is underestimating biodiversity. Other approaches may possibly overestimate biodiversity. So this is just a few things to think for you. I am almost on time. Ten minutes to break. Ten minutes to break, sir. Okay. Please ask things. <laughs> I think the question I would want to ask you have asked. At what level do you now decide whether to classify one as a species or, she wants to say, or not? Because you just provided the question that we have, for us who are working on insects, the entomologist. I found clear distinctions between my populations of what is assumed to be one species. And now the argument every time I presented it is like, we can't take you as a species because then we've not done all these matings there. There's another one which is chemical-based, where you say, okay, if they are species, then they should come to this level. But I have the belief in what I've done that these are cutting out as different species. And you've provided the same questions, and I don't want to go back with questions, because I want to get answers to what is my defense line now, because I'm presenting this. We are planning to use uh, the insect, the sterile insect technique, which requires good level of precision if you're talking about, about different species then you have to have a good confidence that they are different because subsequent stages we are, go are going to be based on those that we are calling, I don't know whether I want to call them morpho species or morpho species. Uh -huh. So I want to know, must we always go to the genetic level? At what level do we decide, okay, these are more real species that we should consider them as not just small groups that are living in different areas? What? And you pose this question, I just want to know at what level must we always trust the molecular aspects or must we, what else can we do, breeding? No, I think the species concepts are flexible in terms of what kinds of characters are good for recognizing the units. No, 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 no single concept says if you don't have genetic data, you, you are doing wrong. No, 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 the concept says, if you have a set of characters that suggest you that the entity has been evolving 
independently. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good set of information. We use genetic data because it's the kind of data, the, uh, the kind of new data that we can add to our first hypothesis. Is the kind of the information that is arising. But if we had further morphological, I, I show you, we have songs, for example. Songs can be a good indication that they are independent. And then they, and songs are related to breathing. So, so, we, so we can say, okay, if I, have, if I have these two populations and they have differences in song, we, I don't know about genetics, but possibly they are isolated, reprodu reproductively isolated, because birds tend to recognize it made by song. Okay, in, in cases of insects, of bacteria, wh whatever, maybe the, morph the morphology, morphospecies are good as an estimate of the diversity. For many groups, what you, you, you have to rely on that. But what, what, you, what you need to think is that applying one criteria like interbreeding may be wrong, and you may be obscuring the real diversity. What, what I would do is saying, okay, I will recognize as many units as I can based on this concept and this set of characters. If I'm wrong, okay, I'm wrong. But if I start wrong, like saying this is the same species, I'm obscuring all, all the picture. And that's dangerous. That, that, that is why I rather use a splitting approach because with, with more information, you will be able to say, okay, I was wrong, but these belong together. It's okay. Instead of saying, who cares? All these are the same thing, and you be begin losing populations, losing species. It's, yeah, it's, wrong. it's related to one of the graphs you <coughs> Remember the graph that showed how our research and publication is changing in Mexico? And then you mentioned that the recent surge in publications probably is she wants to see, is due to the development of uh, a molecular techniques. Mm -hmm. And that is actually going to cause a lot of problems. I can foresee future revision of actually some of the work you've done. One of the developments in the molecular world is the development of the barcoding technique. And this barcoding technique can have its own problems because it's very shallow in resolution. And where it's been used, for example, in our own, on the fruit flies, it will ma lump so many things together. And I'm sure if someone applied similar techniques to what you have already classified in Mexico, he's going to find very few species for that case because it's very shallow. And when I see a surge in publication, I can for uh, tell that something is going to happen in the future. Someone is going to produce something that will refute even what mm -hmm. you have classified in the past. Yeah. Yes. Well, barcoding is, remember, is one marker one a small piece of the genome that is used. It was designed to be used for other things. So I, I'm I am not a, a true believer of barcoding. Anyway, it's information that is that it is useful. That is useful. So, but of course, one marker doesn't might, might not that marker might not be the right one. As Tom, correct me to say something. <laughs> okay. I, 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 will, I will say that the more information you have, the more useful. 